A schematic diagram shows the components and interconnection of the circuit using standardized symbolic representations. In the electrical and electronics industry, a schematic diagram is often used to describe the design of a piece of equipment. Schematic diagrams are often used for the maintenance and repair of electronic and electromechanical systems. In line with this, we also learned about the common electronic components and their schematic symbols such as the resistor. Resistors are used to reduce current flow, adjust signal levels, to divide voltages, bias active elements, and terminate transmission lines. The capacitor. A capacitor is a device that stores electrical energy in an electric field. A capacitor can store electric energy when it is connected to its charging circuit. However, that stored energy can dissipate when it is disconnected from its charging circuit. So it can only be used like a temporary battery. Capacitors are commonly used in electronic devices to maintain the power supply while the batteries are being changed. The inductor. The inductor, also called a coil, choke, or reactor, is a passive two-terminal electrical component that temporarily stores energy in a magnetic field when electric current flows through it. The DC or direct current source. An electrochemical cell or battery is a prime example of DC power. Direct current may flow through a conductor such as a wire, but can also flow through semiconductors, insulators, or even through a vacuum, as in electron or ion pin. A wire is a single, usually cylindrical, flexible strand or rod of metal. Wires are used to bear mechanical loads or electricity and telecommunication signals. A switch is an electrical component that can disconnect or connect the conducting path in an electrical circuit, interrupting the electric current or diverting it from one conductor to another. An electrical load is an electrical component or portion of a circuit that consumes electric power. This is the opposite of a power source, such as a battery or generator, which produces power. Examples of Analog multitester or multimeter uses a moving pointer to display readings while the digital multimeter have a numeric display and may also show a graphical bar representing the measured value. They are the meter scale, nameplate, needle corrector, positive test probe, negative test probe, alternating current or AC voltage selection range, direct current or DC voltage selection range, resistance adjustment knob, needle pointer, ohmmeter range, and DC milliameter range. Resistors. Resistors are used to reduce current flow, adjust signal levels to divide voltages, bias active elements, and terminate transmission lines. How to read a resistor's value the easiest way? First, you need to have a resistor color guide. Second, determine the colors of the resistor. In my example, my resistor's colors are brown, black, brown, and gold. Following the color codes, the first significant figure is brown and has a value of 1. The second significant figure is black and has a value of 0. And the third color is brown 
which is the multiplier and has a value of 1. And the color gold has a value of 5%. The color gold stands for the tolerance band. It means that there is a plus or minus 5% in the total value of the resistor's reading. The easier way to read the value is just to keep the first two values the same. We know that our multiplier is 1. Let us convert that 1 into 1, 0. If our multiplier is 2, just convert that into two zeros. Therefore, our resistor's value is 100 ohms. Resistance is measured with an ohmmeter and is represented by an omega symbol. When using an analog multitester to measure resistance, it is necessary to calibrate the multitester first. In calibrating the multitester for measuring resistance, do the following. Step 1. Adjust the range selector to the lowest ohmmeter value, which is times 1 or x1. Step 2. Connect the test probe pins together. Step 3. Use the ohmmeter adjustment knob to adjust the needle pointer and set it to zero. Step 4. You may now begin testing a resistor. Since we know the value of the resistor, let's check if our manual reading is correct. Attach the test probes at both ends of the resistor. There is no polarity involved, so you may connect the probes wherever you need to connect them. Observe that the ohmmeter reading is at 100 ohms reading with a 5% plus minus value. Therefore, your manual calculation is correct. A capacitor can store electric energy when it is connected to its charging circuit. However, that stored energy can dissipate when it is disconnected from its charging circuit. So, it can only be used like a temporary battery. Capacitors are commonly used in electronic devices to maintain the power supply while the batteries are being changed. Capacitance It is the ability of the capacitor to store an electric charge and the unit of capacitance is called the farad. A faulty capacitor may have one of the three basic problems. A shorty capacitor, which is easy to detect and is caused by contact from plate to plate. An open capacitor, which is again quite easy to detect and is normally caused by one of the leads becoming disconnected from its respective plate. A leaky dielectric or capacitor breakdown, which is quite difficult to detect as it may only short at a certain voltage. This problem is usually caused by deterioration of the dielectric. The capacitor with this type of problem is referred to as a leaky capacitor. 600 microfarad using an analog ohmmeter. Step 1. Ensure that the capacitor is discharged by shorting the leads together. Step 2. Set the ohmmeter switch to times 100 or x100 range. Step 3. Connect the test probe to the capacitor. The black test probe to the negative indicator and the red test probe to the positive terminal. The needle pointer will deflect rapidly to 0 ohms initially. Step 4. While the test probe is steadily connected to the capacitor leads, the needle pointer should then return to infinity as the capacitor charges. 